Let us now try using the BRCG explainer to understand global model explanation for this data set. When we discuss global explanation, we are referring to the ability to articulate the reasoning of the entire model and all the different cases that it handles. Some models are simple enough that their reasoning can be easily interpreted into human language. These are called directly interpretable models. All the tools that AIH 360 includes for global explanations and some for local explanations are directly interpretable models. So why BRCG? Since our data is divided into classes, benign and malignant, it fits well for the Boolean rules governed by BRCG. If we were working with a problem that provided numerical predictions, we would have used GLRM. And if we were using maybe a neural network, we would have used profweight. BRCG is short for Boolean rules for column generation. A Boolean rule is a yes or no rule, and BRCG creates a series of yes or no questions that classify the data. In our case, it generates several requirements that classify the observations as benign or malignant. These requirements are easy to print out in a way that a human can read. You can see here, the first requirement is if the mean concac concavity is greater than a negative 0 0.65 and the worst concavity is less than or equal to a negative 0 0.44, then the mass is benign. Another combination that would indicate benign is if the mean texture is less than or equal to 0 0.45 and its worst, worst smoothness is less than or equal to a negative 1.30. Again, since we are in doctors, this might not make a lot of sense to us, but now we know what questions to ask. We can see the rules the model has generated for itself. Once we have these rules printed out, anyone can use them to make sure that the model is making reasonable choices based on expected factors. For instance, an engineer can make sure the model isn't making choices based on irrelevant factors. A doctor can make sure that the choices make sense medically and the general public can be comfortable knowing that they can see the workings of the model. Let us now move on to local explanations. We are going to look at two tools for this, Lime and Shab. When we discuss uh, local explanation, we are referring to the ability to explain a specific result from the model. Questions like, why was this particular mass determined to be malignant? Or how sure is the given result? In order to use any of the AIX360 local explainers, we need the model that gave us the result that we are trying to explain. This model may be as complex as is required for the task at hand, but for this demonstration, we will use a simple logistic regression model. We first check the performance of the model because explaining a non-performing model would not be of much use. Our example model is sitting at 97% accuracy, which is fantastic. So we can be confident in moving forward to our first local explainer, that is Lime. Out of all the local explainer tools available to us, we skipped TED because TED requires that the original data have explanations attached with it. Since we need to generate our own explanations, we start with Lime. Lime that stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanation works by first creating slightly mutated versions of the observation that we want to explain. It then feeds these variations to the original model and observes how the model forms with 
with the mutated data. In this way, Lime builds a directly interpretable mini model that reflects only the decisions that pertain to any given specific case without getting into the complexities of the entire model. Once the directly interpretable Lime model is trained, its reasoning is easy to display. You can see on the left of the image, we have the different characteristics that Lime determined were indicators of the positive class, that is benign. And then on the right, bars that indicate if the selected example contained that characteristic with green showing it did and red showing it did not. In this case, the abundance of green bars shows us that the mass in question is in fact benign. The doctor can use this to see the healthy parts and determine which ones need to be checked further. They can use their domain knowledge to ensure that the diagnosis is trustworthy. For instance, we can also see that there are a few factors that might indicate that the mass is not benign, like fractal dimension error and a doctor would be able to take a closer look at these to confirm that they were not important instead of just blindly trusting the model. Now let's look at another local explainer, SHAP. While Line generates a simple model specifically for its own use case, SHAP usually uses all the data to calculate the importance of each of those factors. SHAP gets its name and functionality from Shapely values. Shapely values were originally developed for game theory, but work just as well here in the machine learning world as well. The formula first calculates a base value that represents the general imbalance in the data set. If you choose a random instance, how much greater is the chance that it is benign than the chance it is negative. Once the space value is established, the formula sequentially adds the different characteristics of the observation and observes how much they influence the final result. In this way, SHAP calculates which factors had the most impact on the diagnosis. You can see a graphical output of SHAP in the diagram here with blue factors pulling the diagnosis towards benign and the red factors pulling the diagnosis towards malignant. In this example, the doctor can see clearly which factors were most important in the benign diagnosis. In this case, on the right, worst concave points and radius error are the factors that largely indicate this mass to be benign. They could also see to the left that mean compactness indicated that the mass was malignant, but notice that its measure is much smaller than worst concave points. It's not a strong indication that the mass is malignant, therefore. Worst concavity, and these other factors give a much stronger indication that the mass is in fact benign. Let us now change gears and try to understand the explainability of deep learning models using SHAP. Many of the tools in the AIX360 toolkit, including SHAP, can be used to explain deep learning models as well. Deep learning models, although can produce more accurate results than the traditional machine learning models, they are usually much less explainable. They often have millions of parameters and hundreds of layers built into one model, which makes explaining their reasoning extremely difficult. Let's start with some background about how deep learning solves the image classification problem. It employs a layered neural network to identify patterns in the images. There are three main types of layers and they depend on each other. The data is received by the input layer, passed on to the hidden layers, 
for processing and then the output layer generates the result. The specific image classification algorithm that we are going to discuss in this case is convolution neural network that automatically generates and learns features of images. Image classification can be considered as the fundamental topic for computer vision. For these problems, SHAP Deep Explainer can be one of the most used ways of explaining deep learning models. The advantage is that SHAP provides both global and local explainability. In this tutorial, we are going to use a simple multi-class image classification problem to illustrate a deep learning explainability model with the SHAP Deep Explainer. The idea here is to test this explainer's performance for a CNN pre-trained model in which only the final layer is trained based on three classes for a small data set. A new animal image data set is used for this problem, which has three classes, cat, dog, and panda. This is a small data set with a thousand images in each class. The idea behind taking a small data set is that if the explainer provides reasonable information, even with small data available, then we can be confident that when it has millions of input images or data points, it would be able to perform well as well. As for the modeling part, we imported the pre-trained ResNet model, but we trained the final layer based on our three classes. This gave us a 98% accuracy. This diagram here shows the model architecture for our specific problem. So how does the SHAP Deep Explainer work? First, we must load some images for the explainer and then define the background and test images for the Deep Explainer algorithm. As background images, we use 100 images out of the batch of 128, while for the test images, the next five images in the batch are used. We can finally instantiate our Deep Explainer algorithm based on the background images and the model. We are using a small number of samples here because the deep explainer algorithm can be computationally very expensive. All right, this is the results based on the deep explainer. The rows represent the test images while the columns represent the true values. To be clear, red pixels demonstrate positive SHAP values in other words, the pixels that contributed to classifying an image, while blue pixels demonstrate negative shaft values that are pixels not classifying an image to a particular class. The outcome based on the test images is that the deep explainer has focused on the face, especially the eyes and nose when differentiating these three animals. For example, the algorithm highlighted the pixels of the animal's eyes and nose as red whenever the model predicted a true value. Also, blue pixels were highlighted whenever the model didn't classify a panda as a cat or dog, for instance. This concludes our case study on explainability of AI. To summarize what we have discussed so far, trust is essential to integrating AI in a meaningful way into daily businesses. Explainability is the ability to provide a clear and relevant explanation of a model's decision and is one of the pillars of trust. The AIX360 toolkit can help explain data models and model decisions in clear and visual ways for a variety of audiences. Thank you.